Welcome to the weekday report for Tuesday, May 20th. I'm Joe Potente. Here's a brief look at the news. A temporary restraining order filed against a five-year-old kindergartner at Prairie Lane Elementary School was dismissed in court this morning. Kenosha County Court Commissioner John Mason said it was inappropriate for the court to become involved with something more appropriately handled by parents and the school. The story attracted national attention last week when the parents of a six-year-old girl filed the restraining order petition after they say the boy taunted and hurt their daughter and told the girl he would bring a knife to school and cut her throat and watch her bleed. The petitioner, Brian Metzger, reacted after this morning's hearing. I understand his decision after he explained himself. Um, I am disappointed, but I understand. Um, I understand because of the age that things have to be the way they are. For more on this story, check KenoshaNews.com and see Wednesday's Kenosha News. The City Parks Commission signed off Monday night on a plan to move the Kenosha Dream Playground project from its original location at Kennedy Park to Petsky Park. Officials said the switch was needed because Kennedy Park will undergo changes in the next few years, including the possible closing of Kennedy Drive. Dream Playground supporters said they did not want to wait until the Kennedy Park issues were resolved before their playground could be constructed. With the change of venue, supporters are hopeful their fully accessible playground will be installed at Petsky Park by next summer. City Council members have reached an agreement on how to resurface some area streets that were badly battered by this winter's weather. It was always thought that 104th Avenue and other streets that border Kenosha and Summers would get repaired this year, but those plans hit a roadblock when a state grant that was to pay for half of the repairs fell through. Now the city has signed off on a cost-sharing agreement with Summers. The Summers Town Board will vote to ratify their end of the deal this week. The second campus for the Kenosha School of Technology Enhanced Curriculum will open next fall with about 340 students. Work is now underway on the conversion of the old McKinley Middle School. KTEC Principal Angela Anderson said openings for the new campus were quickly filled during the application period in January. She said the school has a few openings in third grade, but waiting lists in all other grades. Between the new school and the existing KTEC campus, the charter school will have about 800 students. The Kenosha Kingfish hosted an executive luncheon on Monday at newly renovated Simmons Field, complete with an appearance from Chicago Cubs owner Todd Ricketts. The Collegiate North Woods League team made its impression on dozens who attended the event, which included speeches from Ricketts and Mayor Keith Bosman. Attendees sat in the dugout club behind home plate in seats recycled from Baltimore's Camden Yards and were treated to steak and lobster. The Kingfish hosts their home opener on Saturday, May 31st. Wilmot Baseball shut out Indian Trail on Monday. Jeremy Reeves has the story. Wilmot's Austin Brewer pitches during his team's 6 0 non conference victory over Indian Trail on Monday. Brewer tossed a complete game two hitter with two walks and five strikeouts. One of those hits allowed was a single by Indian Trail's Gavin Lux, shown at the end of this clip. Evan Ketterhagen went three for four to pace Wilmot's 10 hit attack. The third ranked Panthers improved to 13 2 while Indian Trail dropped to 16-3. Jeremy Reeves, Kenosha News. What's trending today? An appearance this week on NBC's Meet the Press, Republican National Committee Chairman and Summers resident Reince Priebus said Hillary Clinton's health and age are fair game for political debate if she decides to run for president. What do you think? Tell us on our Facebook page. Up next is Diane Giles with this week's History Mystery. The Durkee House Hotel made news in the 1800s when it went up and when it came down. When it was built in 1843 by Charles Durkee near Kenosha's Harbor, the four-story Durkee House was the finest hotel in Wisconsin. The clay to make the bricks came from Anderson's Pond, which was located where St. Joseph's Catholic Academy High School stands today. The name of the hotel changed to the Halliday House after the Civil War. A tragic fire there on the night of January 31, 1871, injured more than a dozen and claimed the lives of seven people, including a woman and her four children. For the Kenosha News, I'm Diane Giles. Thanks, Diane. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. James Lawson has a feature on a Kenosha company's unusual effort to recycle shrink wrap. And one of the works on Kenosha's lakefront sculpture walk is being switched out today. Brian Passano will be there to document the changeover. 
Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Joe Potente with the Weekday Report.